Hello again. Good night. Good night, everyone. Um, this is a few good men, and we are live once again on a Friday. We just give our audience the opportunity to come on in. Come on in. This is a few good men. Share the live. Come on in, guys. Let's give you a few minutes to. Come um, on in. This is a few good men. How are you doing, Sam? Great. It's Friday. <laughs> I'm feeling good about tonight. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Sam, I see you. You're yeah. sporting your few good men t-shirt, man. That <laughs> repping the brand. <laughs> Absolutely. Looks great, feels great. Quality. Wonderful. Ah, good wonderful, night. wonderful. This good night, good night, everyone. Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just taking the opportunity to welcome in our viewers. Thank you so much. Share the live, guys. Share the live. Um, this conversation is going to be rather interesting and is needed at this time. And don't forget, hit the like button. All right? Share the live. Hit the like button. It helps the channel to grow. Um, and we appreciate and don't forget, hit the like your comments button. and feedback. Sam, so I know today's, uh, I mean, today's the first day of, uh, or well, second day of freedom. <laughs> well, actually, the third. The third? third? Day of freedom. Yeah. Right. Yep, yep. That's true. That's true. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to bring on Willem to the platform. All right, guys. Share the live, guys. Hit the like button. Share the live. Willem, you're alive. Hey. Pleasant good night, everybody. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I... I you know, we just like the audience to know that we are wearing our signature Few Good Men t-shirt. <laughs> yep. 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 That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, share the live. All right, so we'll get started um, shortly. We have our guest in the back end, and I can't wait to bring him on. I just want to inform you guys that um, the last uh, 30 minutes, we're going to be an hour. We're not going to be long, so we're just trying to flesh this topic out. Um, but the last uh, 30 minutes or so, we'll start to entertain questions from the audience. Um, so just bear that in mind. All right, guys, let's get the ball rolling. Let's get the ball rolling. All right, guys, so welcome again to A Few Good Men, uh, where you get genuine answers from real men about real-life issues. A show where men get to reveal their biggest pet peeves about the opposite sex, relationships, dating, while offering advice from experience. Now, the program, most importantly, will also dive into some serious topics pertaining to current affairs, religion, lifestyle issues, dysfunctional behaviors, you name it. We are going to speak about it here on this platform. And tonight's topic is entitled uh, Living the Life You Want, Investment Tips for Millennials. Um, this topic was chosen because I think it is pertinent. Um, I, I, Sam, I don't know what you would, and Willem, what you think about the topic? Um, I think it's pertinent. I think um, a topic that is going to resonate with young people because we all want the same things in life. True. Hey guys? Yeah. Just, to, just today I saw someone asking for tips. Um, financial tips. Financial tips on how to make it in today's world as a millennial. Mm. And I invited her to come on the show because I know Whoa. a lot of people are struggling. They don't know how to make it. The, That's right. Um, the whole market is different now, so things are different. So, the, the, the things that apply before definitely may not work in this um, day and age, you know? That's right. So it's, that's it's, right. It's a timely conversation. Thank you. Thank you. That, that, that's yeah. true. Now, uh, millennials are, are what we call Generation Y. They face unique financial challenges, as Sam mentioned. Um, th these include just the changing employment landscape. We're talking about the mountain student debt. Um, this generation now has to find creative ways to achieve goals such as buying a house, having children, or saving for retirement. I remember um, a gentleman was saying to me that when he was 25, he was able to build his house and have his family. And now, when you, well, years later, you're seeing that you have 25-year-olds who are still struggling. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Now, this reality for most, um, it looks bleak um, as the cost of living keeps rising and people are seeking, you know, are sinking actually in, in mountains of debt. Um, here on this platform, I really want to flesh out this topic because I think if we are able to provide this platform where we could just better advise people to be better steward of their money, of their, of their financial 
um, resources, um, that it will be better for them for their financial future. Um, my guest tonight, all right, guys, is Akeem Bourne. He's a certified John Maxwell leadership coach, an entrepreneur, an investor, a multi-business owner from the island of Barbados. He's a graduate of the University of the West Indies, Barbados, and while attending, while attending sorry, that campus um, as an entrepreneurship major, Akeem was awarded the accolade of top entrepreneur by the Institute's Entrepreneurial Development Program. Now, his professional approach to leadership and teamwork helped him to co-found the Takeover in 2014, an organization that was built on the principles of vision, professionalism, determination, integrity, and long-term strategic planning. All right, guys, I can't wait to have that discussion with the gentleman here, um, and I'll bring him onto this platform. Hello. All right. How hey, are you, Carlin, my brother? Hey, guys. Grateful to be here Hello. with all of you, man. I'm loving the t-shirts. The brand <laughs> is clear. Shout out to a few good men, man. Super, super grateful to be here. Wonderful, man. Um, I appreciate you. Um, right now, I, I believe you're in. You're you're not on in the Caribbean, are you? Oh no, <laughs> I'm somewhere. in Barbados. I'm in Barbados. Oh, no, oh, I, uh, I'm at a, a villa right now. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I I know that you you travel um recently. Um, yeah. no, Akim. Um, this is an opportunity for you know the Grenadian population to get to to know who you are mm -hmm. as a young person, uh, an entrepreneur, um, you know, and a leadership coach, someone who who has vision. <laughs> And who has a, 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 the vision for a better financial future, not for only for yourself, but your family and for generations to come. So just tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, good night, everyone. Uh, again, Curlin, I'm super grateful to be on the platform with you guys. And you guys are doing a phenomenal job here uh, with this show. And I believe that tonight we're going to have a great discussion. The topics that we're going to discuss, I know there are people on that the content will be viable too. So like Curlin said, my name is Akeem Bourne. I'm a 32-year-old entrepreneur. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur now for the last, probably I'd say about 14 or 15 years. And uh, a lot of it has come, this journey as an entrepreneur, because of just my desire to live life on my own terms. You know, just wanting to be able to travel when I wanted to travel, not be, you know, limited to a, a boss or limited to a schedule that I didn't create. And um, ever since then, I've just been enjoying my journey. Uh, it's been filled with lots of ups, lots of downs. Uh, but where I'm at right now, I'm just so grateful because God has been good. And I'm so grateful to be able to speak to you guys and share my experience and, you know, what has worked for me and some of the pitfalls that I may have fell in that you guys could probably uh, avoid as well. All right. Um, I know that you're the CEO of Elevate Worldwide Inc. Um, just give it a background behind that. And you not only own the, or, or operate that business, um, you actually own several businesses, yes, including so a clothing store. <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah. So the company uh, Elevate Worldwide, that's my entrepreneurship coaching company. So uh, when I was at university, I realized that there's a need not just to, to teach individuals the importance of being successful as an entrepreneur, but more importantly, being successful as an entrepreneur from a leadership perspective. And I've realized that when you can become a person of value, when you can become an entrepreneur that knows what they want, you know, knows how to operate the business and you grow yourself, you can function in any business. You know, I believe that that once you focus on developing your skills as an entrepreneur, then you can thrive in any business because you're going to outsource if you don't have the skills, you can develop the skills. And all of that has to do with you as the operator. So my company, Elevate Worldwide, is just geared towards equipping individuals and how they can become the best version of themselves. And then, like you said, I've got a clothing store partner with my friend, my best friend, Kay Lashley, and his mom here in Barbados. And, you know, I've got some other projects coming as well uh, uh, in the e-commerce space and, you know, public speaking. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that I do, uh, but really and truly uh, from an investment standpoint as well, uh, I'm grateful because God has been very good, very good to me. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, Sam, um, Willem, uh, I just want to get your, your take on it. Um, my experience in Grenada, um, it almost feels like the system wants to keep us poor. That's the, that's the feeling that I'm getting. I'm, I'm not sure. Are you of that view or are you of a different view? Anyone could just come in, come in there and comment. I don't think it's on purpose, but it's just the way it is designed. It's not designed for what we want to do. 
But um, I think slowly but surely we are changing things. And there are a lot of um, opportunities opening up um, either by GIDC or certain banks and um, Community Development Bank. Um, they've been doing quite a bit to help people who don't have a lot of startup capital to, um, to invest in, in businesses. So we're getting there slowly but surely. Uh, the next thing we have to think about is the interest rates that we have in Grenada, which mm. is actually a barrier um, to entry. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it's it's a slow go to China. Oh, <laughs> Willem, I know you're as an entrepreneur um, yourself, um, I'm sure you have had some challenges. Uh, what are your comments on that? Uh, and do you think that the, the environment is, is actually conducive to build entrepreneurs from the grassroots up? um well the environment is 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 not wholly and solely conducive to to make you want to be uh an entrepreneur um uh, because every time you go to do something it seems so hard but that's 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 the the goal in being an entrepreneur you you cannot concentrate too much on your environment because if you, you if you go to stick too much on your environment and the circumstances that surround what is hindering you from doing what you want to do you could never really well in my opinion you can never really call yourself an entrepreneur because you have to look beyond these different things and jump over the hurdles to get where you want to get you mm. cannot own your own business by saying you know what my boss wouldn't give me the time to to go and, and register and all these different things you know but you'll continue working for your boss all the days of your life and 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 not get to where you want to be so you have to right. bypass hurdles. You have to bypass these things and push yourself uh, as okay. an entrepreneur because nobody's okay. going to do that for you. But That's the environment, right. the environment that we are in, it mm. is not 100% conducive to you wanting to be that because as soon as you jump out and you jump into that place whereby you say you want to do your own thing, everything starts getting a lot harder. There's a lot of fight. There's a lot of uh, pushback. There's a lot of setbacks that are going to happen, and as Sam rightly said, um, in our in our environment right now, in our in our community where it concerns uh, uh, prices and taxes and, and and the high interest rates and so forth that mm -hmm. uh, are put on a lot of things that would help you to build your own business, it's a bit scary at times. Um, I know. Uh, just 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 if we if we even look at the situations with with dealing cars. If somebody wants to jump into the into that particular field and, and start your own dealership or whatever the case may be, then it's very difficult because from the minute time vehicles come into the port, the mm -hmm. the, the the price to clear them is ridiculous, I and uh, right. the persons who are already established and have the money to do these things have already pretty much captured a big part of the market. Doesn't mean that you can't capture a piece too. Mm -hmm. However, though. It's very difficult in the initial stage, uh, especially right. here in Grenada. Right. So, so if you can get in... over the first set of hurdles, mm -hmm. then right, it, it protects those who are already in it. Right. So Go I want to jump in here. I want to jump in here. I'm um, I'm bringing Akim on this conversation. Exactly. Now, you have forgone the nine to five. <laughs> Just explain that process. Um, and in Barbados, I, I mind you, I've been in Barbados a couple of times, but I'm not okay with the culture. Um, yeah. Do you think that in Barbados, it, it it breeds a culture of entrepreneurship from, from a grassroots level upwards? Yes. Yeah, so I saw somebody put a comment in the in the chat. It came up on the site there, and I, I want to mm. kind of expand on what they said because I think that, yeah, that, that exact same comment there, because I think it has, to lot, it has a lot to do with what has happened in the past. And the structures that we live in right now, economically, educationally, those systems that we function in right now, they were created for an age that, that no longer exists. And let me tell you what do I mean by that. The industrial age created an educational system and an economical system that did not allow for the average individual to become an entrepreneur. The purpose of that system was create the perfect employee, right? That's why still today, individuals who go to school, the mentality is that as soon as I come out of school, I need to look for a job as opposed to creating jobs. And the reason why it's that way is because the system was designed that way from years ago. So it doesn't matter what country you're in, 
just some countries have it happening on a larger scale, like us in the Caribbean, I agree 100%, more people gravitate towards working a job. And again, let me just say this, there's nothing wrong with working a job. I believe everybody should start there. But the truth is, is that a job is not designed to give you financial freedom. A lot of people mm. don't understand that. Your job is not designed to cause you to become financially free. The average job more so, the average job is designed for you just to be able to make enough money to pay bills just so you can survive. But if you plan mm. to be an entrepreneur, more often than not, you've got the mentality that you don't just want to survive. You want to thrive and you want to live above the, the issues. You want to live above, you know, the money problems, if they can word it like that. And to answer your question now, Kerlin, as it relates to here in Barbados, absolutely. You know, I think the mentality is the same here where uh, people gravitate towards uh, safety, where they believe that a job provides that uh, assurance and, and uh, uh, a stability. But the truth is, is that that's not true because the only stable job I know, uh, and I heard my friend say this, and I'm going to just give him some credit to this quote here. The only stable job I know is working with horses. There's no such thing as a stable job. <laughs> some, of, some of you are going to get that you know, in, a, in, a, in a couple of years from now. Yeah, a couple of years from now. Because the truth is, is that with all the uncertainty in the world right now, you know, we saw it with uh, the pandemic in 2020 where, where the world was on pause and, you know, people had to make decisions because they were losing their jobs. You want to put yourself mm -hmm. in a position where you are in control where you control how much money you make, how much time you spend working, when you can have lunch. How, you know, it's funny, you know, when I used to work uh, uh, in a clothing store in Barbados, uh, uh, I had some, some, some freedoms, you know. I, I was not locked into a specific time where I had to take lunch, but because of how busy the store would, would be sometimes, my lunch hour would fluctuate. Sometimes I would get an hour, and then other times I get 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And, you know, for me, that was not an experience that I wanted to have years down the road. I wanted to determine if I'm going to eat lunch in Barbados or if I'm going to do it in a different country. If I wanted oh, to man. travel, you know, the freedom. Yeah. That's why I love entrepreneurship freedom. so much because mm -hmm. it gives you freedom. We're, we're a nine to five or having a job. It really has a lot of constraints and restrictions. That's why I said at the beginning, you want to start there right the problem is not just with having a job you know that's fine but if you only have a job if that's your only stream of income you begin to put yourself in some problems which obviously we know what happened True. in 2020 so yeah mm. wow um well um and sam um i want to get i want to get your take on that as well um some of the comments that he made you entrepreneurship um in your view uh, you know you've been in business, um, having your own business as well. Um, you're in the construction field. What was the experience like for you? Very, very briefly, what, what, what was the experience like for you? And um, what are some of the challenges that you had to overcome? And this is a question I'm gonna to take to, 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 to the panel, to everyone to answer. So Sam, very briefly. Well, it's getting people to first trust you when you want to um, embark on a mission. Because when, you, when you're not, well established. Mm. People like to go with the old way. And a lot of the times, even though you bring in fresh ideas to the table and you can show people how, how to work and you believe that you have them sold on this particular idea, you would show them, they would love it. They would say, yes, I want this. And then when it's time for them to actually get into it, they tend to go um, and embrace the way that has been for th hundreds of years. Yeah, you know because sure. that's the safest way. And you know this this person is young, so I don't necessarily trust him. So I'll go with who I know. That's that's mm. one of the things that we face. I'm mm. um, Willem. Um, some of the challenges that you have faced as well. Um, well. One of the things, one of the things that you'll have to uh, be able to overcome is um, one: the people who are closest to you. Um, this, this, this kind of switches the conversation to a different level. But you have to we'll learn get to, to that. overcome. You have to mm -hmm. learn to overcome the people who are closest to you because they are the ones usually that 
does not see your vision yeah that's uh, right. they, they they're usually the ones that 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 would tell you you really think that making sense yeah or they would tell you you're fine you're fine you should do that you're fine you should get into that and they always put that element of doubt in your mind whether you want to uh really embark on this journey or whether you want to stay away from it and just continue working your normal job because in your mind the salary supposedly seems like a sure thing mm. but in my in my in my experience so um i have i have i have um i have more than one one business um i have i have um i have a small business which i which i started uh, a couple of years ago and that was mainly to to start doing vehicle rentals and and those different things i started with it um but due to some of my own inconsistencies i kind of got out of the the renting phase and and that also had a part to play with me listening to a lot of other people and not kind of keeping focus on what i wanted to do mm. so but on the on 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 the flip side of that i was able to invest in certain things that uh in the long run now is bringing in me consistent um um amounts of money and uh, it's because it's because of me not saying you know what let me just sell everything and just call it quits it was me having to hold on to some of my to some of my goods and and so forth and saying you know what let me wait this out and see how it's going to go uh before mm -hmm. just calling it quits and then you have to be patient especially as an entrepreneur because anytime you try to rush uh to build a particular something then usually you miss a lot of parts and then before you know it there's a lot of cracks and so forth in a building that you are trying to, to to establish in the first place so for me it took a lot of patience in waiting uh to see where the opportunity would come and the opportunities did come uh and apart from that um it that uh move over into me helping and, and and inspiring a lot of my other colleagues to join in uh in starting uh, a small company at this point in time so getting 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 rid of a lot of the negativity mm -hmm. that surrounds your thought pattern is one of the best things that you can do as an entrepreneur um Wonderful. and as 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 akim was rightly saying um you have to get to a point where whereby you want to be comfortable uh saying you know what i can have my lunch hour in grenada or i can have it in spain and <laughs> when you get when you get to that point you have to tell yourself that you know what you want this for yourself because yeah, nobody's going to just hand it to you on <laughs> on that platter so right let me come in here um akim i want to i want to bring you in here um I want you to just really flesh out your experience um, and some of the difficulties that you had to encounter and what did you learn from that experience because i want to get into another another um aspect of that of that question as well so go right ahead yeah no i think i think this is a great question because uh, when you really begin to study entrepreneurs and their journey you realize that all of us we experience the same type of challenges you know and 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 for me my perspective is this entrepreneurship is about solving problems and your ability to solve those problems that you face as an entrepreneur will determine how quickly and the level of success that you will have, right? So issues like funding or being able to raise capital, self-confidence, you know, believing in myself and knowing that I've got the ability to do what it is that I want to do, you know, leadership, making sure that I've got teams around me that can help me accomplish the goal. You know, those are some of the main things that I would have experienced over uh, uh, my journey, you know? And the truth is, is that it's only within, I'd say within the last four years or so that I've really become clear on, you know, what it is that I've got the ability to do, especially as an entrepreneur, because what happens is that you could be in the industry or, or, or in the field of entrepreneurship, but you're not clear on what your strengths are right you're not clear on what your weaknesses are and if you're going to build a business that encompasses or entails other people it's not just you as a sole operator you got to know what your strengths are you got to know what your weaknesses are and that clarity came for me i'd say about four years ago 
So all of these other years of building businesses and failing, you know, and not getting to the level that I wanted to get, I would say it's, it was because of me. You know, it was because I didn't take the time out to understand myself and my strengths, my weaknesses, develop my leadership ability and my capacity, you know, not understanding how to raise money and how to be a leader that gets people inspired to want to invest in me. Like all of those are things that over the journey of these last 12, 13 years, I've been an entrepreneur. Yeah, have been have been things, that obstacles that I had to overcome. You know, and now where I'm at in my career, you know, I can say that because I've developed a sufficient amount of self-confidence for where I want to go. I truly believe that there's there's nothing that I can't do. Anything I put my mind to, I can accomplish. You know, any team that I want to build, I can build. Why? Because there's no limits on what I can do. There's no limits on what we can do on this call. You know, the, the individuals who are listening and watching as well, you've got a limited potential to do what it is that you want to do when you want to do it. You've just got to believe that. You've just got to know that. And that self-confidence for me, I really believe uh, was a big game changer for me in my career. Wonderful. I, I want to ask you a question um, in terms of um, gaining access to capital from financial mm -hmm. institutions. Um, I know a lot of entrepreneurs with brilliant ideas have, have had you know, proposals sent into banks and, to get funding. And because yeah. they didn't have collateral, their project was not approved. Now, what was your experience like um, just being an entrepreneur? Yeah, so let me tell you something I learned a couple years ago, and I know this will be viable to, to everybody on the line. The banking system is designed a particular way, and you want to write this, but I'll always remember this. The bank is designed to give money to people that don't need it, and people that want it always have a difficult time getting it. Why? Because the bank is about managing risks, right? If you ask any True. banker, any individual that's in loans or in uh, 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 mortgages, their whole premise is to never lose money, right? Mm. That, that's the whole premise behind the bank. The bank is to never lose money and to always be profitable. So you will see that the individuals that already have a lot of money saved in the bank, they always get access to funding. While individuals who don't have a lot of money or collateral, like you said, in the bank, they have a difficult time getting funding. So let me tell you what I did. I read a book uh, a couple of years ago called the, uh, the five well secrets right and in this book the writer talks about building or digging wells before you're thirsty right let's say that again you want to dig wells before you're thirsty what does that mean that before i needed to get money from the bank i was saving money i was putting money on the bank mm. i was earning money and just leaving it there i was depositing money so that when the time came they could see a consistent trail that created trust that then allowed me to be able to leverage, you know, the income that I had there or the, or the money that I had there saved. So that's what I'll say. You know, my experience has been just that, you know, I anytime I needed to borrow money, it was because I I had money there saved already for years that I was able to leverage. So what I would say to someone that's starting from zero, that doesn't have any money right now and they want to get funding from the bank, find a way to start to generate income. Even if mm. it's at your job, I tell people this, right? You never want to be in a point where you are earning money every single month, but you're not able to set aside something that you can save, whether mm. it's $10, whether it's $15, because people think that it has to be a certain amount. When we talk about investing, and I guess we're going to get into those questions soon, yeah, people think that it has to be a certain amount. But the key to successful in investing or success with money is the mentality. You've got to have a certain way of thinking about finances. You've got to have a certain way of thinking about money. And as you begin to create this momentum in your mind, it reflects uh, 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 It reflects outside of you. And and you see it happening uh, uh, if you're saving and you're saving $10 a month or $20 a month. That may seem like a little bit, but that compounds over time. It adds up over time. And the bank will be able to see, okay, you've got certain habits that create trust that allow mm -hmm. them to be able to say, all right, I can trust you with this money. I want to get it back. And I feel like you can do that. So that's what I'll say to that question. In terms of confidence. Um, there was a question here, and, and I really would like to engage the comment section. Um, mm -hmm. Before I take the question, um, one of the issues we have in the Caribbean um, and being the descendants of enslaved Africans, we were not given any wealth to pass on. Right, and we and because of slavery, we have learned not to have that culture of passing on wealth, yeah. creating wealth and passing it on. 
But when you look at the other ethnic groups that are in our country, they're doing pretty well. Yeah. So I want I just want to bring the question in from uh, Ms. Sylvester. She's saying that now, essentially, she's saying that uh, most uh, people start from scratch. No assets, no investments was handed down to you. Now, what factors contribute to this? Um, just very quickly, um, guys, Sam, in, in your view, what do you think con contributes to that um, reality that we face? Very briefly. Well, two things. Number one, um, our parents were not taught yeah. about generational wealth. And then number two, I can hear of don't believe in it and they're going to spend their money how they want it and their children are going to have to use whatever education that they got to fend for themselves. So those are the two main contributors. Mm. A lack of financial um, education amongst all people mm. and our belief in a particular thing because we have to look at what other people have and see how we can emulate it. These things, that is not envy. That is learning. Yeah, that's and right. We we need to understand what people do and, and try our best to see how we can pattern it. Hmm. Willem, in your point of view, uh, briefly, um, you know, from your experience, what, what what do you think contributes to those the, the fact that we're not passing, we're able to pass on generational wealth? Um, it's it's something that has to be thought uh, to be taught uh, at the stage. Eh? Um, because mm. right now, right now, that's something that I, I am, in my mind, invested in having to teach uh, my kids when they grow up. Mm. Uh, because, because all the, to, the honest truth about it is, sometimes if you, even if, if if some of us parents are still here and we speak to them, you would realize that even if they have the ability to make one decision that's going to change the course of your life and theirs to turn them from just being there, one house, working hard still. And even if you give them that one decision to make and say, you know what, we could change our lives if we do this, they won't take the risk. Right. And we, we, we see that over and over. You would tell them, okay, well, this is what you need to do. This is because we understand things from uh, a, a, a modern phase. But they see the old school and they're stuck in the old ways. And because, uh, because, because that wasn't taught to them, a lot of us who are now breaking out of that, that, that old cycle of thinking are now coming to see that there's so much different ways and avenues for you to make money that... Yeah. It's ridiculous how a lot of our four parents weren't able to capitalize on these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I remember hearing stories of of people who were related to me who owned plots and who were in charge of so much land and estates and all these different things, and they resorted to selling everything out for the person mm. who put them in charge, and now they own nothing. Nothing. So, <laughs> so 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 you mm. see in from that standpoint it has mm -hmm. to be taught and sam, and sam rightly said because mm -hmm. it wasn't taught we always been we, we're, we're always continuing to be stuck in a cycle uh yeah. but for those who don't yeah. have it though and mm -hmm. made and made the uh, made it available for themselves went out work hard and decided not to buy the car not to buy the fancy jewelry not to buy this but to invest their money differently kudos to them Wonderful. Um, I want to that. I think that that now segue into my next question for um, Akeem. So, all right. Now, mind you, let's say finally I get this epiphany that yo, look, I am tired of this nine to five. I'm tired of this low wage, minimum wage. As a matter of fact, in Grenada, I think we're 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 already on the breadline before COVID. <laughs> now we're probably under the breadline. You know. Um, my question well, is, I have a, yeah, no, that's, yeah, we. <laughs> What, Willem, what did you say? There's a crumb line. The crumb line. <laughs> no, yeah, but no, it, you ain't on a bread there. Yeah. You ain't on a bread there again, bro. But my question yeah, like is, <laughs> I want to be able to invest, Akeem, right? I want to be able to create generational wealth, but I, I don't have much money, right? My question to you is, where should I, where should I invest my money, all right? If I'm brand new to investing, I don't understand the concept, where should I invest my money? If I only have a little bit, is it worth it? 
And what kind of return should I expect as a young investor? So essentially, I'm basically asking to just give us a roadmap for someone who has no knowledge, prior knowledge of this investing thing. Yeah. Yeah, I get this question a lot. And, you know, my number one response is always you want to take that money and invest it in yourself first. And what that means is that you want to take that money and develop yourself with skills, with the right way to think so that when opportunities come that you you, you see, like, for example, cryptocurrency and different things that I'm going to talk about in a bit, you've got the, the mental fortitude and the right way of thinking to be able to capitalize on things like this. Because the truth is, is that people don't invest in themselves, you know, and that's the best investment that you can make. Before we talk about assets and, and property and cryptocurrency and, and Forex and investing, you know, the biggest and greatest investment you can make is in yourself. And that doesn't require a lot of money. As a matter of fact, we've got the greatest university, free university called YouTube, where you can go <laughs> on YouTube and learn yeah. so much for free, right? You can sure. become and grow uh, uh, your skill set uh, 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 and grow as a person for free. Then if you want to spend some money, because I believe in, in the law of sowing and reaping. So if you want to spend some money, then there's there are websites like Skillshare. Uh, uh, there's so many websites out there that you can pay for to get knowledge, to get education. Because Sam hit the nail on the head. It's really about information that changes situations. The more knowledge that you have, then you can make better decisions. The more knowledge that you have, then you can be better with your money you can capitalize on opportunity because you know what to do most people are struggling with money is because not that they don't have the desire to do better it's that they don't know what to do so i'll say invest in yourself first use the money the little money that you have to become more knowledgeable to become more skilled to become more aware and then as you begin to grow in that you and what's going to happen is that your mind is going to then be able to recognize opportunity you're going to be able to recognize small uh, opportunities where you can start a business here, you know, or probably work for someone there just to generate income. Because then as you begin now to generate more income now, you've got more financial leeway or play to be able to then make investments into stuff like property, into stuff like cryptocurrency, Forex, uh, whatever investments uh, you may be passionate about. Mm, all right. I want to kick in about cryptocurrency. Now, first off, the biggest thing on the internet right now, guys, is this NFT, this yep. non-fungible, non-fungible Token. tokens. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is that? So I looked into it and I realized that, yo, people are selling art, just simple little graphics for millions. Yep. Now, I want to get your experience when it comes to the digital space, uh, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Um, and all the other uh, platforms that support that type of electronic, um, yeah, financial. Yes. So, so what I'll say firstly is that cryptocurrency and digital assets change my life completely, right? And I mean that uh, because, again, a couple of years ago, I didn't know anything about Bitcoin. I didn't know anything about NFTs like you're talking about. But I got access to a mentor that showed me the importance of having the right information. And this is what he said to me. He said, Akeem, listen, the world is changing right in front of your eyes. And the question is, are you changing with it? Because if you're not changing with, if you're not growing with it, you're going to get left behind. You're going to see a world that was once relevant, a world that once did things a particular way, completely change in front of your eyes. And because you didn't make a decision to capitalize on it, you're going to miss out. It's like when the internet was being created, I know, I know some people, they may have experienced a life without internet. They may have experienced a life without Facebook, without social media. Uh, I know many millennials may not have experienced that. But you know <laughs> yeah. that when the internet came, uh, 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 came about, people made millions of dollars. That changed the complete landscape of how we do things. That's what cryptocurrency and NFTs and Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these things are doing right now. Ethereum. And you've got to have a mindset. That's why I spoke about investing in yourself because you've got to have a mindset and awareness for this thing. There are people that are probably on this call right now that don't even know what cryptocurrency is, don't know what NFTs are, don't know what Bitcoin is, don't know what Forex is. Like There's so many vehicles out there, like William would have said, 
that if you have the mentality, you can find a vehicle to take you towards your destination. You could find a, 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 a investment route, if I can word it like that, to help you get towards your financial goal. And for me, Forex and cryptocurrency, that was one of the vehicles that created my wealth. You know, I realized that, and I said this earlier, information changes situations. If I hold on to old information, guess what? I'm going to continue to get old results. If I mm. want new results, I've got to get new information. If new I want new experience, I've got to, new experiences, I've got to become a new individual. And that's really what's happening right now in the world. So yeah, get some wow. cryptocurrency if you can. <laughs> but how should one start? And before you answer that question, um, Sam and Willem, very briefly, um, I'm sure you 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 know about um, in, um, you know investing um, cryptocurrency and all those things. I'm not sure how much knowledge you have on it, but um, this is where the world is going. And and I think in Grenada we don't put enough emphasis on the digital space and the wealth that it could create for someone. Uh, just some quick comments from y'all um, in terms of that. Sam, you want to go first? Well, I can. Um, it's something that I've been investigating for some time now, researching. I've actually been um, doing some uh, mining on this free one called Pi, just to understand exactly what it's about. Wait, wait, what's the name of that? Because that? Pi. Say the name again? Pi. Pi. Oh. Pi, okay. yes. Um, but it's not trading for anything right now. But it's just for you to understand how mining works and how trading works and whatnot. But um, I, because of the way I am set up, um, I know that I don't have a lot of the time during the day to dedicate to certain things. So I wouldn't fully immerse myself into it. I have not done so as yet. I'm really into real estate right now. Oh, and I we'll get like, into that. Yeah, so I would like when I am at a particular point, even though, as you say, the grass, the grass growing and and, and, and the horse starving, uh, the opportunities <laughs> are passing me by. But I don't want to do too many things at one one time, right. which is a situation a lot of people get themselves into. But I'm very much interested in it. in the digital space. Um, well, I'm very yeah. briefly. Um, I'm sure you're you're rather interested in the digital space as well. Um. I, I I was more interested in the digital in the digital space before. Um, no, I have I have kind of jumped back a little bit from the digital okay. space. Why? Um, in order in order to do a few things. Um, so so like I, like I said, I I, I was um, I encourage a few of my my colleagues to start investing together. So. Mm. Um, and it was something where we spoke about yeah um, we did before. we did yeah all right yeah, so did. so right now so right now what one of the things that i've learned is that there was a whole system of how the top heads of the business industry in grenada did things uh a lot of years ago mm -hmm. and it worked uh the thing is it's still working today the, mm. the the bad thing is a lot of Susu. people because you're talking about susu right no 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 no, 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 no not susu not susu not susu oh okay 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 i i just run susu differently <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the old heads what they did was come together above all other things and mm. decided to invest together and mm. it had worked back then and it's still working today because as we rightly spoke, let's just jump back a little bit to how the banking system is set up. Colin, if you go to the bank alone and you have, you want to take a loan for a hundred dollars and only ten dollars you have on the account, they go tell you no. If we go to the bank together, you have ten, I have ten, and it's twenty percent, twenty dollars they need, twenty percent they need uh for you to get a hundred dollars and both of us paying it back together they will give us a hundred dollars you know why because there is more people with a same mindset vested in the same thing to achieve the same goal and then the bank tends to look at these little factors so sometimes going about doing 
things on your own could prove to be a little bit more difficult than when you partner with someone. Uh, because the cost and everything is shared, um, the the time, the effort, all these different things and them are shared. And then it helps you to have a little bit more of a peace of mind. So I've been using that system and it's been working um, to be able to invest in different things to bring an income. As Sam rightly said, uh, the, cryptocurren the cryptocurrency side of things, I did dabble in it for a little bit, but what I did was take the same system that they're using and apply it to my company. Company. So okay. where, yeah, because most, 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 most of the persons who do the, the, the cryptocurrency and so forth, they have changed it from a pyramid scheme because they're now selling a product or they're now giving something else. They've changed it from that into a legitimate business. So I've basically taking, taken the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, and put it into my company but the good thing about it is everybody is on an equal level wonderful so i, I want to cut that way mm -hmm. so Finish that your way point. everybody makes money wonderful. so so for me the, the cryptocurrency side of everything it's mm -hmm. it's it's very good it does mm -hmm. make you good money uh but you have to understand it and like akim said is the, the the knowledge if you because he had the knowledge of these different things he was able to invest in it and make the money from it but if you right. don't have the knowledge mm -hmm. i wouldn't advise jumping into it because you will jump into it spend the money and then when you don't see the returns that you like to see you'll just quit and say it was a sham altogether so okay yeah uh, akim in response to what he said um uh, that's an, that's a fear that everyone has when it comes to investing um because and especially from a small island uh with a lot of scams going on people are hesitant to get into investing and trading online now i know you have experience in that i want you to put it that into perspective and really yeah. just yeah flesh out that, that that whole situation yeah I, i'm gonna go back to the the point of education you know because people get scammed and they get uh taken advantage of when they don't know what it is that they're doing they can't identify a fraud they can't identify a scam or a pyramid scheme like uh like william would have said and what happens is that more often than not, individuals that are that get caught in things like that are usually looking for something for nothing. You know, they're looking to get rich quick. They're looking to break yeah. the bank immediately. And that type of mentality attracts certain types of things to them. Right. They uh, mm. are they gravitate towards low caliber and low uh, uh, types of opportunities if they can word it like that. And they end up getting getting scammed. You know, so uh, what I'll say again, it's just learn the difference between a legit uh, uh, investment opportunity and somebody just trying to scam you or some some fraud on social media because it's big on social media right now people are impersonating uh, uh credible individuals and pretending to you know offer services for them and then when people send the money uh the person is gone uh <laughs> with their money right and i, I uh, for me personally i don't know why that happens because if somebody tells you that you can invest five hundred dollars and two and in two days or or or, or 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 two hours even so crazy you can make ten thousand dollars you know what, what what kind of frame of mind would you have to be in to think you can get that type of return right so it's really mm. about having the right mentality having the right education and finding a mentor you know this is the point that i'll expand on here too quickly you know yes your mentor is your shortcut to success you know, the reason why a lot of people feel in life is because they don't have a mentor. They don't have somebody ah, that has yeah. gone before them that, you know, can show them the ropes, that can tell uh, tell them the pitfalls and the potholes mm. to avoid. Most people are trying to do it by themselves. And if you're trying to do it by yourself, then you've got to be okay with the results that you get, the experiences that you get, because you don't have anyone guiding you. You don't have anyone telling you, you know, what to do and how not to do it. And that's where a lot of people feel. So for me, it's just a matter of if you want to invest in cryptocurrency, if you want to invest in trading online, if you want to mm -hmm. invest in real estate, because I'm telling you, there are people that scam in real estate as well. There are people that scam okay. in every single industry, right? But you need to find somebody that's credible, somebody that has the results that you want and listen to them, you know? So, so yeah, so that's what I'll say. Okay. I, I want to, I want to, yeah, Sam, come on. Yeah, if I may, sometimes I agree with Hakim. 
But what happens, a lot of the people who are in, involved in pyramid schemes, they would first get to their families. And so this is somebody that you trust, and they would come to you with this thing where, and, and it's, it usually gives itself away. Once you have to join something, and then you have to look for people to join, to bring in, so that you can make money from them entering, then you need to be beware. Um, it's not always a pyramid scheme, but a, a, a high percentage of those things are pyramid schemes, and you need to be very careful. And it breaks mm. families up, and it's people that you trust. And mm. there's this particular guy who told me, you know, man, you need to join this thing and what and I say, but people are going to lose money from this thing in the back end. He said, just make sure that you pull your money out early. And this is the way people are thinking, and this is somebody that I know. And I said that if you're going to treat your friends and family that way, then you need to be very careful. We need to be careful of everyone, yeah. you know, because this, everybody just wants to get rich. They know that these schemes do fall apart, so they invest early, pull the money out early, and leave you holding the bag. So because we're catering to, we're looking at our market here and really our target audience are the working class, young, youthful Grenadians. We have over 62% mm -hmm. young people in Grenada and many of them are just working to survive, right? Now, Akeem, I will just yeah. address a question to you because if I'm, I want to create a business, a legacy for my family, I want to pass on generational wealth, I want to be able to understand and be a better steward of my money. I want you to just put into perspective, where should I start? Because I want to start a business, right? Put into perspective, where do I start? And, and what, what are the channels that I should go through in order to ensure that I build that foundation? Yes, yeah, so I think, especially out here in Barbados, uh, where I live, uh, they have uh, entrepreneurship, um, uh, I guess, incubators and different, different entities that gear towards equipping and educating entrepreneurs my company as well does that as well so you got to first start with getting the right information you want to get the right education you want to get the right knowledge so that you are setting up your life and your business for success you know i know many entrepreneurs that they have a great idea but they don't have the legal set up they don't have the legal framework uh, 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 in terms of their business being incorporated you know so that it's free from personal liability like certain fundamental structures like that a lot of people don't have that education and information. So you want to get you want to get educated. You want to find somebody in your country or in your market that has the results that you want, that knows what it is that they're talking about, and you want to ask them questions. You tell them, "Hey, look, I want to move in this particular direction with my life and my business. What should I be doing? Can you help me get to this particular point? Find a mentor, mm. find someone that's willing to help you, and just follow the course towards success. You know, just focus. You know, you hear people say that statement, focus follow one course until successful, your mm. mentor will tell you what you need to focus on. And mm. uh, once you do that, you'll see yourself start to get results. Mm. You know, I, I there's this one person that I listen to on YouTube. Um, his name is um, Busi. Um, he's a venture capitalist. And one of the things that he said that, <laughs> he said that he's, he's going to, business plans, you just have to rip it up. Because business plans is, yeah. Is, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's one of the things I said. No, that was that would that sound crazy to me because we were told, look, you gotta write up your proper business plan, make sure you got your financials in order. That's that's the message that we're getting. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so two things, you know, I agree with what well, what he said in terms of ripping up the business plan. But the reason why the business plan is also important because it serves as a guide and it helps you mm -hmm. stay accountable in your business plan. You should have what your financial goals are, you know, what your, your, your projections are, how you plan to actually get to these points uh, of success. And that's mm. what the business plan, uh, it serves as a guide. It serves as an accountability. And if you plan to go to the bank and mm. get funding, the bank will ask for that. But you'll be surprised, right, that after you give that to the bank, the bank doesn't, the bank doesn't even look at that after <laughs> that. You know, that's why it's just, it's just it's a crazy, weird, exactly. crazy process. Wow. So you just need to be able to to be malleable enough if it can use if it can use that word to be able to present the documents when they're needed, but then you know when to adjust and adapt and not have to use your business plan uh, to still succeed. Mm. Okay. In terms of um, all right. So other sources of of capital to get your business started. Um, what are some of the basic principles that we have to learn as as you know working class people with that mentality? 
we want to be able to have because you mentioned about saving right mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But it's building that culture of saving. We're, we're consumers. We don't produce anything. That's right. Akeem. <laughs> and that's one of our problems in the Caribbean. Yeah. Sam, I'm Willem, I, I'm not sure if you agree with me on this. But it's like all we do is consume. We don't produce anything. Yeah. We yeah. spend the most money. We spend yeah. the most money right. as a culture. As, as, right. as, as, and then we must, we must party hard to celebrate because we, celebrate. we worked hard spending. God, we worked hard spending. Work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. So I'm not out of pose. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I think we celebrate too early. So yeah, so Akib, I just want to just um just come in on on this point. Like, you, yes, you meant you you mentioned that we have to get a mentor. Yes, we have to get our minds right. But know that we get our minds right. Then what is the next step? Yeah, I love uh, this question because it's something that I do a lot of teaching on. And the truth is, is that this is what I believe. If you plan to be successful with money. You've got to take the time out to understand how money works. You've got to understand what to do with, with $1 before you get to 100000 or $1 million. If you don't know what to do with $1, how to manage $1, you're never going to get to 1000 or 10000 or 100000 right? Oh, so this, man. Yeah, that's, that's a, a Look, success Look, hold on. Could I, could I stop you there? Man? I want to toast to that. I, I want okay. to toast to that information, man. <laughs> I want to toast cheers to that, man. Okay. Cheers to that, man. Continue. That's almost done, but chase to... <laughs> Yeah, mine, uh, mine is almost gone too. <laughs> this is okay. Yeah, but um, so like I was saying, once you understand that there's something that needs to be done with your money, I usually teach three things that you do with money. First, you make it. Everybody should be finding a way to earn more money, to make money. You know, that's what we've been taught at school, to go to school, get good grades, to get a high paying job. But watch this. Some people, after they start to make money, they never get to the point of managing it, which involves saving, which involves telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Most people every single month cannot tell you where their money went at the end of the month because they're not managing yeah. their money. They're not tracking sure. their money. And watch this. If you are not tracking your money, your money can't grow because what is measured increases. What you track grows. And because you're not tracking your money, then your money can't grow. So very few people, they manage their money. But then watch this part right here, which is the last M, the third M. You want to multiply your money, right? You want to make it. You want to manage it. But then you need to find ways to multiply your money. Most people, like I mean, like 99% like, like of the entire world does not multiply money. They don't even know that their money is supposed to be multiplied. I love what Sam said. I'm going to use that. You know, where he said that you, you work so hard and then you celebrate, uh, you party. What, what was the exact quote? You celebrate and party for Sam. working so hard, right? I love that. Uh, you work so hard at spending that you must celebrate it. Correct. You work so oh, hard at man. spending that you must celebrate. Let me tell you why that's a great quote. Because when you look at the word spend, in it is the word end. Every single time you spend your money, it comes to an end. So every single time yeah. you just take that money... And release it out of your hand without the understanding that, you know what? My money is like little soldiers. And the moment that I release it, I expect more money to come back. That's where the multiplication comes in. When you begin to multiply money now, that's investing. That's having your money work for you. That's having multiple streams of income. That last M, a lot of people don't even have a clue that they should be multiplying their money. So that's what I'll say to that question, Curlin. Oh, man. Damn, man. That's heavy, man. Yo, that's heavy. Look, we need to mm -hmm. look at ourselves as a culture, man, because where we're going <laughs> is not, it's not a good place, man. It's really not a good place. Um, I wanted to uh, flesh out um, leveraging credit. Now, I listened to a couple of in investors, uh, people who actually have money. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, one of the things they did, the top billionaires, like um, uh, Facebook, um, Mark Zuckerberg, um, and um, Richard Branson, they don't have degrees, right? So that, that to me is, a, is one red flag, right? Mm -hmm. But they're billionaires. But one of the things, the fundamental things, is that they are able to leverage credit. And yep. they're not spending their money. That's right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so speak to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw somebody put something in the chat. Rich that uh, poor dad, right? That poor dad, correct? Yeah. Robert yeah. Let me put that up. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a phenomenal book. That book is what mm. set me uh, on my entrepreneurial journey. And in that book, he oh. explains this concept called OPM, you know, which stands for other people's money and being able to leverage other people's money 
as opposed to spending your own because here's the the key and this is what you always want to remember the rich and wealthy we don't spend our own money we find a way to leverage other people's money we find a way to borrow to to use to deploy somebody else's money why because mm. it's less risky that way right we put mm. things in place that allow us to be able to use other people's money and then as you begin to get more advanced and you get more successful from leveraging other people's money you then move into something called OPT which is other people's time where you make money on other people's time now this is where oh, you get in yeah this is where you get in now to <sighs> high six figure income and seven figure income because most people are just making money on other people's money but this is how you really get financial freedom now where you use other people's time and that's a whole another training uh, that's a whole another set of information there oh damn man all right no yeah. i know that you you do lectures and stuff but i just want to get quick comments from um will am i see you, your your hands <laughs> like you're sucking it in bro <laughs> yeah i mean uh uh <laughs> No, it's 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 true because exactly exactly what exactly exactly what Akeem saying is exactly what's happening uh, in this day and age. Um, most of the people that even we ourselves we're, we're working for, they've gotten to that level, so they're making money off of other people's time. They That's they right. created they created the opportunities whereby okay, if I get a few people to do this, I make X amount. Yeah, and I give them this. But the rest belongs to me and they have to do nothing at all so so if we if we if we start adopting that same level of thinking then mm -hmm. we too would be able to create uh businesses opportunities and all these different things for even our own selves to be able to sit back and watch our money make money for us multiply uh, make money for exactly. us <laughs> uh, Sam, exactly yeah, I mean, and, that, and that's the goal and, and yes, there, there are several you know, you, you can have a situation where you do something once, you sell it over and over again, like writing a book. Right. You do the work once. And then there's where people make money is through subscription. You know, you have one product, but you, 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 you do updates or you add additional information time after time and you get people to keep subscribing to it. And so in this way, you do work once or... Um, occasionally, and you have people subscribing to that thing. So once you get enough people, you're making money in your sleep. And the hardest part, or the two of the hardest things to do is to come up with the idea, first of all, and to get people to buy into it. But these are the ways that some people are getting filthy rich because they're using people's needs and having them pay over and over again, like Microsoft subscriptions, you have to pay for everything now. Yeah, Netflix before Netflix. you could have you could have bought <laughs> yeah before you could have bought something once and that's it. But now you have to pay every month or you have to pay every year and, and that's yeah. just the way of the world right now. Mm. I, I wanna I wanna ask a question here and Akeem, um you 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 would flesh that out. Um so in dialogue with uh, an entrepreneur, um he was saying to me that um do you know that your property could be a liability? And I was like, but no, we are thinking our properties are assets. <laughs> he said, not really, because if you don't have any rental, you know, so basically what he was saying is that he could have a car and his car could be an asset rather than having a house. And that could be a liability. And to me, that blew my mind, you know, a few years back. But I just want you to just put into perspective. What does that mean? Because people don't really understand that we're taught to think house asset. Yeah, absolutely. And again, credit to the book rich dad poor dad uh, mm -hmm. robert kiyosaki does a great job in that book explaining the difference between an asset and a liability and the truth is is that you know most people don't understand the difference between those two things and that's why people think their house is an asset that's why people think their car is an mm -hmm. asset but the truth is an asset is anything that generates income for you a liability is anything that takes uh, uh, uh takes money out of your pocket so for example my cell phone is an asset right uh uh uh, uh my property uh the one here in barbados it's 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 an investment property and that's an asset if i lived in a house where it was not rented out then obviously that would be a liability to me you know people think that the moment that they get a mortgage uh they own the house no you don't own the house the bank owns the house right mm -hmm. you pay the <laughs> bank every single month for this oh, house man. And, and even when you pay off the mortgage, yes, you own the house, 
but that home still has expenses every single month. So it's so important to understand this fundamental truth that anything that generates income for you, it's an asset. And that could be something as simple as this pen. That may sound bizarre, right? How can this pen generate income for me? If I, this is, this is a Brightland pen. If I lent this pen to, to, uh, uh, to, to you, Curlin, right? Yeah. To write to a particular signature or something. And I rented it to you, right? I rent it out to you. I say, Curlin, bro, I'm going to charge you 20 US dollars to write with this pen. <laughs> Right, this pen is an asset to me because it's making money. Making from, you money. Yeah, correct. Uh, uh, mm, as opposed mm. to my car, where every single day I'm driving it, and I gotta pay insurance, I gotta pay uh, uh, gas, all those types of things, maintenance, and it's not rented out. It's not generating any income for me. It's actually taking money out of my pocket. That's the liability. Yeah, so mm. I think that's important. We understand that. Mm, very, very, yeah. very, very well put. Very mm. well put. And the same, what I'm seeing now, just people just, are actually but, using their homes as um a bed and breakfast. Correct. Where you're renting yep. out a room to someone and you rental can, you can income. put it up That's online. Right. Rental income. You know, so yeah. there I know so there are many things that you can do. But when it comes to a home, because we, we have apartments, right? Because I felt bad about giving the bank this money and I can't get anything from it except to say that I live in this house. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the other thing I was thinking about is that I wanted to remove that burden from my children. So that when, because that this is a sacrifice I'm making for my children now. So that when this mortgage is paid off, they are not starting from zero. Yeah. Right. So that is Generation. another way of looking at it. So that's mm. where the generational wealth comes in. That's right. And then I have to teach them how to manage this so that they don't squander what I have put into it. I mean, I can teach them, but it doesn't say that they're going to do it, but at least they know. Yeah. So that when they're older, I, they're not looking to buy a piece of land. I want them to take what they have now and build on top of it. Because my, my parents never owned a home. My mom never owned a home. But I, I well, I pay a mortgage for a home now, right? Which I hope to own soon. So that my children are going to have that financial freedom so that they can think about other things. They have a place to stay. So now they can think about other things and they can even invest while they're home. And if they want to build their own home while they live home, it's up to them. But they have the flexibility. And this is where a lot of people fall short. Okay, well, I don't want to own a home because, you know, X, Y, Z. But so they prefer to rent because owning a home is not for everybody. But yep. at the end of the day, if you're thinking about the children coming up now, then you have to think about because it doesn't make you can't pass on rent a rental. It doesn't make sense. You understand? It doesn't, it doesn't so make financial you sense. You have to yeah. teach your children, listen, and when when they get older, I said, I want you to take this and multiply it by three and pass it on. But it's something that has to start with me. And I have take I have taken up that responsibility. And I will make sure that I see to the end. Mm, well said, That's well good. said. Akeem, any words from you? Um, particularly uh, the mindset of the fact that we normally tell our kids, yo, look, I work hard for my my house. Yo, you need to go and work hard for yours. That's the mentality. Um, I'm sure that, that is happening in Barbados as well. I'm not sure. You, you can clarify that, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's a, a reflection of the mentality that we as, as black people have, you know, it's, it's, it's a reflection of, you know, what has been passed down for generations where, you know, some, some people think that because they struggled hard to get what it is that they want, their children have to go through that too. And I love what Sam said, because that's my philosophy as well. Uh, I must be a platform or a shoulder upon which my children can stand upon. My children can't start where I started. You know, they have to have mm. an opportunity to do to, to experience more, to start uh, right. uh, further ahead. And if you're not thinking about that, uh, my favorite book says a wise man leaves an inheritance, not just for his children, but his children's children. So you're thinking two mm. and three generations down the road. And how do you mm. begin to do that? Boss. You start to think like what you start to think like what Sam is saying. You've got to put things in place. No so that when your children get to a particular point you begin to have certain conversations with them and the truth is is that the, the people are not just people are not having the conversations with their family i i'm gonna be honest with you 
in all my years of being an entrepreneur, even before I was an entrepreneur, I never spoke to my parents about money. Ever. Mm. I Did never, they speak to you? They never about spoke money? to me about No, I never had a conversation about money. You know, mm. and who, who was mentoring me was the guys on YouTube, you know, the guys uh, uh, at school and stuff like that. And I remember one day, this was when I was selling candy at school. I used to sell stuff like Jolly Ranchers and, you know, different little candies at school. And I would make a lot of money and I would keep the mm -hmm. money in a shoe box at, at home, right? <laughs> and one day my mom comes into my room and I was counting the money and she sees all of this money in the shoe box. And she was like, where did you get this money from? And I told her, well, because I'm selling stuff at school and stuff like that. And she could not understand why I was selling stuff at school as opposed to just being at school to learn, right? And that's why... Uh, again, we've got to be, be different where we start to have these conversations earlier. We've got to challenge the traditional way of doing things. My dad as well, he always encouraged me to go to school and get uh, a, a proper education, but he never encouraged the idea of making money during school. While I was at university, I was making more money monthly than some of the lecturers at university because I had access mm -hmm. to information that awesome. my parents my parents weren't telling me that. You know, I wasn't awesome. getting that knowledge that I needed. So what Sam is doing, you know, talking to his children and, 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 and framing their mind. I don't have any children as yet, but I know when I get my children, they are going to dominate this world. Why? Because the same vision that Sam has for his future and his legacy, you know, all of us on the line, we should have that. And we want to make sure that our children are equipped so they don't come in and struggle because, because a lot of people are struggling. We know that. And how do we make a shift? How do we how do we be a group of individuals that are different? It has to mm. start with you and me. It has to start with you and me. So yeah. Mm. All right. Um, and guys, we 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 we're, we're closing into you know wrap up, but I really just trying to get this get this information out. Um, there's a lot of books that have been mentioned by yourself and and someone in, in the audience. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, very important book. Um, kudos to the person who and richest who man that. in Babylon too. Check it out too. I put it in the um a link in the um in, 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 right. comments. Yeah. Right. Really nice um, this book. Um, what are some of the book recommendations that you would have for someone? Because not well, first of all, <laughs> I hear the same, but people say that look, if you want to hide something, put it in a book for, 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 for black people. I hate that. Because I know we are the inventors, the creators, the innovators from 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 foundation. But slavery yeah. has messed us up. But what are some of the recommendations that you have in terms yeah. of books that people could yeah. read? Together, so I'll together. share three books. I'll yeah. share three books right now. I mean, I've read a lot of books uh, over mm. my course and over my journey, uh, but three that I'd recommend right now. One that I have right here that I'm studying called Hung by the Tongue, right? It's a book okay. on, on the power of our words and the power of our, our tongue and how our tongue either creates or destroys. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's one I'll recommend because the truth is, is that the life that you're experiencing right now, whether it's good or bad, is a reflection of your thoughts, which is connected to the words that you've spoken. So if you said a couple of years ago that you were going to be in a particular financial situation, if you said that repeatedly, you will see how that would have created faith on the inside of you to go ahead and actually make that become a reality. So that's one book I'd recommend. Another book I'd recommend is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, in that book, he talks about something called the self-confidence formula. And in that, that self-confidence formula, uh, that, that changed my life. Let me tell you why. Because at the beginning of the self-confidence formula, this is what it says. I know that I had the ability to achieve my definite chief purpose in life. Let me say that again because I know yeah. that may go over some people's heads. I know that I had the ability to achieve my definite chief purpose in life. What it is that I want to accomplish, I need to know that I have the ability. Remember I spoke about earlier having the self-confidence. The number yeah. one reason why people aren't going after their dreams is because they don't believe they can accomplish their dreams. They don't believe that they have what it yeah. is that uh, 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 on the inside of them. And That's the right. reason why I know that I have the ability because the one that lives on the inside of me, he has all the abilities. So when I know that, I use that as a premise to continue to move forward towards my goals. So that's the second book. And the last book now is a fundamental book on leadership uh, called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. Uh, that's one of my favorite books. Uh, that book completely transformed my life from a leadership perspective. Why? Because if you're going to be successful in life, 
you got to become a leader. You know, you're not going to get to high levels of income, you know, high levels of, of success and influence without becoming a leader. And those uh, those three books, I believe, can give you a foundation. Uh, in addition to Rich Dad Poor Dad, that's a great book as well. Uh, I believe those books can give you some momentum in your life. Mm. Willem, I see you shaking your head there. Eh? <laughs> Anything resonates with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Everything everything he says, everything he says is things that I've... Uh, dived in did some research on and sift through and so forth already and um the reason why um the reason why i'm, I'm by the grace of god uh, i'm able to to make uh, a lot of things come together for myself mm -hmm. uh is because of these same principles um i never approach a situation thinking that i can't make this happen you understand um there are times when 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 i wanted to get certain things and you know, go to the bank and you ask them, uh, you bring your whole plan, as we said before, and they take, business and they plan. Take, you know, draw. <laughs> all these different things, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and these things, these things discourage persons so much to the point whereby they never, some of them are never able to pick themselves up because that rejection right. hit them so hard. That That's rejection right. hit them, hit them in such a way whereby they weren't able to see themselves of being any better. So yeah. the answer that they got, the answer that they got was, was the final answer and they weren't able to create an answer for themselves. And when as an entropia, you're not able to create your own answers, then mm. you will always be subjected to another man's answer. That's yeah, right. right. So, uh, but boss, that's boss talk. <laughs> so boss, yeah. you have to, you have to be able to create your own answers. So, so for all those who are on the live, you have to start changing firstly your mindset the way that you think and be able to, to to trust in yourself trust in your brand trust in your product uh a gentleman we did a course with that gentleman and and, and he was by far i think for enthusiastic uh, uh behavior he topped it because even if this man was having a hard day he was the most enthusiastic person about anything that he was doing and saying. And he told us, he told us this. He said, think about it this way. After every, within every five no's, you'll get one yes. Yeah. So just count it. After every four, just think of the next one is going to be yes. And then with that, you go with a mindset that, you know, if he tell me no, all right, let me do it again. Tell me no, all uh -huh. right, come in back down let me do it again you know you know and then before and then before and before you know it sometimes that yes comes way before that fifth one but because True. of the enthusiasm that you have within yourself and the self-confidence that you've built within yourself you were able to push forward and not let that first no deter you from doing what you wanted to do yeah just to add that's just to add, yeah that's good man just to add to what he said too um i understand that the first time you do something you you're gonna be you're gonna suck at it <laughs> but that's just your first time like you know is the is the process is that continuous journey of perfection because i don't believe that perfection exists i believe that perfection is a continuous journey that never ends but at the same time you're mm -hmm. building and you're in progressing you know yeah. towards a goal you know um willem kudos yeah. for, for those statements yes yeah, sam mm -hmm. um i want to comment on something akim spoke about a while ago yeah tell me. um what we're facing now I was in I was in conversation with a man and I, I told him one of my ideas and he said sounds very good but you need to be careful because I have the money and I can do it tomorrow and you can't do it. Damn. Heavy. And 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 it I I it, it sparked something in my brain that you have to be careful who you share your dreams with. Yeah. Because some people are even afraid to create a business plan or even a, 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 a approach a business development officer or someone who does business plans because these people would listen to your ideas and they would want to run with it. And that is why a lot of people are, are very much afraid. And so they hold on to this thing that is so sacred to them and sometimes they end up doing nothing with it. Yeah. So yeah, that is sure. why we really need the avenues in Grenada where somebody can go and take this idea to this particular place and have it developed without fear. 
Yeah. That is going to be stolen. Going to be stolen. Because yeah, it, let me share something on that. A lot here. Yeah. Please. Let me share something on that because this is one of the things that I advise my entrepreneurs on as well, right? When you are in in the position where you've got an idea, you can create a non-disclosure contract because again, you got to you got to know the value that you bring. You can make the banker sign a non-disclosure agreement because what happens is that people go in, they don't have the education, they don't have the information. They're excited about the idea and they go into the meeting just wildly sharing everything. But this is what I tell them. Hey, look, because you know yeah. the value that you bring, the, the bank needs your idea as much as you need the bank's idea. So come in there with a non-disclosure agreement so that the banker understands, hey, look, the moment that you sign this, if you don't give the money, you don't give me the money, but two years from now I see uh, John Doe with a similar idea to mine, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm coming for you because <laughs> I know the value that I bring. You know, I know the, the, yeah. the worth of this Excellent. idea. So you don't have to be afraid of, of your idea being stolen when you have non-disclosure agreements, right? So you just approach the the, 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 uh, the, the, the entity and the business, uh, the meeting with a posture that says, look, if you play games with me, then you will suffer because you seem to think that mm. this thing is a game. So, so yeah, so that's what I advise to anybody that's listening. You want to mm. be smart. Yes, yes. There are some people that, for example, it could be a family friend. It may not even be a professional meeting where you share your idea. It could be in a casual setting. And you may not have the, 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 uh, the framework to, to, to get that person to sign a non-disclosure. So agreeing with what Sam said, you've got to be wise. But the moment that you go into a more formal, professional setting, you better have those documents, man, because you got to mm. protect what it is that you have. Mm. And another uh, thing, um, uh, there's this uh, person uh, I saw, the, and, and it's something that's widespread in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. where somebody said, I want to make five children because when I get to a certain age, I want these children to look after me. And yeah. it's something that still happens, and I can't believe that people in their 30s and 40s are still thinking, I'm talking professionals and they want to make these children. So they prefer to struggle to feed five children so that these children can now turn around and struggle to feed them. Yeah, fact. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. <laughs> and that's 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 the entirety of their um, retirement plan. Yeah. Oh man. Look, this is another topic that I want to have a, on a separate episode, retirement for men. Because this is a few good men, and we're talking all man stuff here. Retirement major issue i would love if, if it's something that you you would want to come back on this program on i would love to bring you back akeem sure All right sure One, i would love to but um i want to wrap up at, at 9 30 but um i think we have you know we have enough time sufficient time to be able to discuss uh, this new, this next um topic so here you are right you have a business that is bringing in sufficient income when is the right time now to level up because you get a situation where you can level up too quick yeah and then you crash so wait where is the sweet spot and when do you know when it's time to level up yeah that's a great question you know and i tell my entrepreneurs this as well if you're thinking about scaling your business like, like you, you use the term level up uh, uh going to a new level i think one of the the most important questions that you've got to ask is do I have the infrastructure? Do I have the the, uh, the 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 business model that's set up to function and carry the business as it begins to grow, so that when I make certain decisions to expand, certain decisions to buy new equipment, certain decisions to hire new individuals, can I truly afford to do that? You know, can I truly afford to grow and expand right now? Because here's the key: sometimes people think that just because you're making more money. That automatically means that you can you can afford to expand, you can afford to scale right now. Oh, That's not always the case. More money not, mm. does not necessarily mean it's time to expand. It does not necessarily mean it's time to do more. You've got to know if you've got the systems because watch this. You could have a large amount of money being generated in income at the end of the month and you decide not to open a new department or you decide to buy a new set of equipment or you decide to hire someone new. You know, obviously, depending on what type of business you're in and what leveling up or scaling looks like for you, if you are not 
uh, uh, equipped with the right systems in terms of the education, in terms of the management, in, in terms of the execution of what it is that you're trying to do, you could actually end up hurting your business. You could actually end up putting yourself in a position where although you're making money, that money then becomes a burden and your business begins to implode, implode. as opposed to, yeah, as opposed yeah, to yeah. growing. So yes, yeah, so that's oh, a great man. question though. Oh man, oh man, that, let me just soak that in a little bit. <laughs> That's a, that's and there's some man. people who, when yeah. they own a business, mm. uh, because of the burden as well, they say, you know what, sometimes I prefer just to work for somebody uh -huh. because running a business is so hard so and so taxing. Hard. And oh. they have to go to bed every night thinking about how to pay salaries and how to pay the yep. you know, bills and, 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 and just, just to make it. That it, it becomes a burden now. And, and this was once a dream and it's now a nightmare. So you have to be that's very right. careful very careful very careful mm -hmm. um another th another point I, I was trying to um get across here um so you're in a situation where you're in your business and i think one of the advice i've, I've heard that in order for you to be, be able to be an entrepreneur you have to know the different levels of your business so if it, if you're opening a restaurant you have to know how to wait you know the wait the tables um you have to know how to clean to mop you have to know every level of your business the cashier the bagger, the whatever. Um, do you think that that's a good approach in order to scale yourself up? And as fast as you're going up, you you now bring an employee up to that level, so then you could step up. Yeah, I think it's leadership. I think it's experience. Um, I love how you worded it in terms of knowing how each level of your business functions, because the truth is, is that. One of the things that I've learned, especially to being a sports player, is that sometimes it's very not difficult, but advice is usually uh, most effective when it comes from a place of experience. Now you can give advice and you don't experience, you know, uh, uh, or you've never lived it out. You can just give your opinion sometimes, but in yeah. business, especially as an entrepreneur, in your business, it's always greater to be able to advise and be able to lead from, a, from knowing, using the example that you would have mentioned, if you're opening a restaurant, what it's like to be a waiter what it's like to, to, to work the cashier, what it is, what it's like to, to even work security. Because then, no, for your business to scale and you've got individuals that fill each of those posts, you need to understand the emotions that they're experiencing, the feelings that they have. You know, when the restaurant is busy, yeah. uh, uh, the average waiter may not be able to manage all the tables. Let's make it practical. And you as the leader, you as the boss of this or the manager or whatever level you're functioning at, you've got to be able to put yourself in their shoes so that you can get the best out of them. One of the reasons why businesses fail, right? And I, I, this is what I coach and tell my entrepreneurs, especially entrepreneurs that have got employees. If your um, uh, uh, employees are going to function at the highest level, you've got to be able to, to lead them from where they are. You've got to be able to coach oh. and advise them from where they are because their oh, experience okay. and, and what it is that they're feeling is where they are. You may be sitting in the back room watching the cameras or counting the money and you may want them to do something particular on the floor and you speak from that place, you're never going to produce results because you can't relate to what it is that they're experiencing. So to your question, I think it's, it's critical to have an idea, even if you've never waited tables yourself, watch this. And this is what I spoke about at the very beginning in terms of my company, what I prioritize the development of the entrepreneur, because I believe that as you grow as an entrepreneur, when you develop the skill sets and the mindsets, you can thrive in any business. For me, I've never worked in a restaurant in my life, but Curlin, if you told me, bro, Let's open a restaurant. You've got the experience. You've been in culinary arts you now for, for all these years. I'll yeah. partner with you, one, because you've got the experience. But two, I know I've got the ability to find individuals that can wait the tables. I can find individuals that can work security and whatever else, is, the chefs, etc., that are required to run a successful restaurant. And I will be able to empathize with them and be able to lead them from where they're at. So we can run a successful business. Too many, too many CEOs, too many leaders are removed from their employees, man. They they don't exactly. have yeah, they don't have a, 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 an awareness of you know, and and because it's just because they're just focused on the bottom line, they're just focused on creating profits. 
not knowing that, you know, the people that create the profits for us, they need to feel as though they can produce. So, I, yeah. That's yeah. a brilliant point. Um, and yeah. wow, like that brings me back to a particular hotel on, on this island. Um, he empowers his employees. And that's why his his turnover rate with employees is, is not that big because people right. you actually feel like you're coming and you're achieving something but you're also benefiting as well so you're not yeah. just staying on one level he's going to level you up yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying Absolutely. so guys look this is a wonderful conversation um i would love to bring you back to flesh out some more about your business right. um uh some closing comments from sam and willem and then i'll get the last closing comments from you I just want to maybe just put a plug into your business and, and your experiences as well. So Sam, Willem, Willem, Sam, anyone? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. as I can yeah. just said, we, we can be too far removed from um, our staff because if you would pass in a pharmacy, because I manage a pharmacy, but you would see me cashing. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had to mop the floors. I've had to sweep. Yeah. I've worked in almost every single area in right. a pharmacy. And so when somebody um, tells me something, I can actually offer um, a solution easier because I understand what their data job experience and, and challenges. Yep. And I'm a person that I'm solutions, I'm solutions driven. And so they would be enthusiastic about coming to me with things because they know I'm always ready with an answer or I would leave what I'm doing. I would go to them, go through step by step and nine times nine and a half times out of ten we would find a solutions or um, a solution almost on the spot so i really believe in that approach um except when the business grows to a massive extent and then you have people in place for that but often yeah. now with small businesses we have people who are removing themselves too quickly and they are allowing the, the, the business to go on autopilot so somewhat and then they don't understand what is going on around them so people can give them a lot of run and run and stories as well as your staff members. But once you know what is going on, people can give you BS. But for those wanting to um, open a business, I would say it doesn't happen overnight. It's something that you have to keep um, trying at. And I understand that we live in a, in a, a age where people want instant gratification but it doesn't necessarily happen for business and even for employment when you want to move up. And some people want to start at the top of the chain. They want to start at the beginning of the line, but be willing to work your way up. Be willing to put the hours in when you have a day job, when you go home, as Aki would say, live on the University of YouTube. Anything that pertains to things that are of your interest and you want to get into, research it and find out everything there is with the information is free go on it because when i'm in my free time i i look at either architectural shows or shows on logistics and supply chain management those are my areas that i love and i'm always in it because i want to see what's happening in the field yeah. so that when you get your opportunity open to open your business you already know what's happening in the industry you're not starting from behind with just the limited knowledge that you have now but you can be able to follow the, the trends so that when you get to jump in, you, you're already knowledgeable and you can build from there. But wonderful. And keep moving. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Willem, uh, your closing comment. So um, um, first off, I want to say hats off uh, to Akeem. You are, you are definitely- off. I don't have a hat, uh, but- <laughs> well, well, scalp off, I guess. <laughs> scalp off. <laughs> <laughs> um but but you are you are definitely one of the persons that um the generation actually needs at this point in time well, yeah. um because a lot of a lot of a lot of people are just going down uh, a pathway without any level of guidance and, uh, and and your voice is definitely one that is going to be paid attention to um as little as you might say definitely is going to fall on some foot as well. so i'm first up want to say hats off to you um, um secondly Better uh secondly i just wanna um i want to i want to just go to to the comment that you just pulled up colin um about the person asked where where where, where do you start where do you find a mentor, a good mentor. Um, let me pull just, that comment up yeah. yeah let me just pull that up very insightful program tonight um but where to start how can right. you find the right mentor i think the I right think, mentor but, yeah yeah right 
So um so so I, I just want to say concerning that um uh per persons 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 can find uh the the right mentor in a lot of different ways. Uh don't limit yourself uh saying that a mentor has to be one particular person um because then you're just going to be searching for somebody perfect and then when they disappoint you you'll fail um so look for uh to that particular individual look for the things that are going to help you build in whatever aspect you're looking to go into if you're looking to to, to start your own business uh find words and encouraging words from persons who have their own business uh talk to elder folks who have their business have the money has been doing it for a period of time has the experience uh as we we we, di we dived into books uh read books and all these different things so don't limit yourself to one particular thing uh the grandmaster youtube go on youtube there are plenty <laughs> of persons who are on there that are giving uh phenomenal advice uh for persons to 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 share uh in in, in their platform and sharing their goals um and lastly um i just want to say for for especially our grenadian uh uh, uh uh persons who are on here uh don't allow uh the system to keep you back from doing what you want to do um we have been trained for so many years uh as black people to be hateful of each other to be selfish uh that every time you see another black man arise you you start to you start to hate him you stop supporting and all these different things i pray that we get out of that mindset and we start being able to pull together because a lot of the times uh being a good entrepreneur means that you have to be able to work well with others and uh, it doesn't you don't have to do everything on your own so folks if you have somebody else that shares the same vision with you and you can trust and work with that person do it because it, it makes life a lot easier it takes a lot of the strain off yourself and and so forth so uh, i pray and i hope that we get away from that selfish mentality and we start working together a little bit more especially in our entrepreneurial dreams um so to sam cullen you guys are awesome uh and to everybody Appreciate else you, who's man. on the show it's been a pleasure being with you guys mm -hmm. tonight blessings all right um the last word goes to you my friend uh akeem um and before you come in here, um, one of the things that I would like to mention, uh, there was something that you said to me um, coming up. I think I was in Vietnam. Um, we all had a, we were on a phone call. I was going into a hotel. Um, and I remember telling you some of the fears that I've had um, because in Grenada, we have had banks of field, a, a capital bank. And, 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 and so um, SGL, you know, people invest money and we have lost. Um, and there was, there was something that you said to me and you said it, tonight live as well and it just reminded me um but just your final comments um in closing um what is what do you want to leave with this public the public the viewing public what is it that you want to leave with them so that it can take home and improve and, and and apply it sorry to their life yeah well before i say that again let me just thank you guys for having me on the call man i really enjoyed the show great discussion uh, you guys are a few good men, you know, and you really enjoy uh, the value you. that all oh, of you. Yeah, man. shout out to the brand. <laughs> I really enjoy yeah. the value, man. Uh, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on the call. I'm learning as well. Uh, so I'm grateful for you guys. And, and yeah, Curly, I'd love to be on another episode. Uh, uh, you just let me know when we can make the arrangements. Um, but what I'll say in, in, in closing and, you know, what I'd love for everybody to just take away from this entire thing is that we just need to believe a lot bigger, a lot faster. You know, we need to remove the limitations, you know, being in the Caribbean, being in Barbados, being in Grenada, there are a lot of, of limitations that we could buy into and believe uh, that could stop us from getting to uh, the levels of success that we want to get to. And yes, there is a measure of truth in it where... They are gatekeepers and people that have created systems that make it very difficult for us to thrive. But what you want to do is not accept that as your reality. Because for me, being in Barbados, we experience challenges as well. You know, there are things I, I, I was listening to William, he was talking about the import costs. Uh, uh, when you import something into Barbados, the duties are incredibly high as well. You know, so there are a lot of limitations. 
but I made up in my mind a couple of years ago that I was not going to let this small island that I live on limit me because I live in a big planet. I live in a big world. Right. And why would I allow? Right. Yeah, why would I allow wow. this small 365 square mile country stop me from becoming, you know, the first generation millionaire in my family? Stop me from becoming wow. the type of person that can make an impact globally. You know, stop me from becoming a person that's remembered, you know, for sharing great content and inspiring people to become all that they can become. And, you know, I want to say that to you guys, remove the limitations, believe bigger, you know, faster, know that you've got the ability to do what it is that you want to do. And don't let anybody tell you that it's not possible. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do what it is that you want to do when you want to do it. If anybody tells you that, don't listen to them. Don't, don't, don't even believe it for you. Because the moment that you believe that, a belief is any statement that you accept as true. You don't want to accept that statement. You want to only accept what you say is true. And let me tell you what's true, that you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You've got a limited potential. So don't let anybody put any limits on your potential. You can do anything. If you believe that, I'm telling you this, you can look back five, 10 years from now, and you can see your life transform because you made a decision to transform it. So that's what I'll say, man. Uh, that's my last closing comments. Wow, wonderful, man. All right, well, I guess a final small bit to say is mine. Um, guys, I really want to leave, leave, leave this point here. Um, you know, looking back in history, African history, um, I was told that, look, we built pyramids. We built infrastructure, um, societies, um, kingdoms without money, without the IMF. Why we can't do that now? <laughs> and it didn't exist. We Word. created wealth out of nothing. <laughs> so I just want to just leave that comment here today. Guys, I appreciate you. Um, Willem, Sam, Akeem, bro, brother, look, you're you're a part of a few good men. And trust me, we're going to have some collaborations. I have some points that I would like to share with you. We're going to get this going, man. Trust me. We're going to okay. build. And I want you to be able to connect with the Grenadian um, uh, market as well, because I know you you like regional integration. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we don't we don't. This is just a platform to start this conversation and then take it and level up. All right, guys. Yeah, good night, it, all. Yeah, man. Good night. Uh, blessings, peace, and blessings, guys. Thank you in the comment section. We love you. Peace. We all right, guys. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. All right.